it is saturday july 31st like 1 25 in the morning and i'm gonna vlog this pregnancy experience i had a doctor's appointment earlier today well earlier yesterday friday july 30th I had a doctor's appointment at 2 30 and she checked my cervix i was three and a half to four centimeters dilated that's what she said and 60 percent effaced after i left my doctor's appointment I went to Kroger, which is a grocery store here in Michigan, and I did some shopping, quick shopping. I was in there not long, but while I was in there, it was so painful to walk. Anytime he would make a movement, it just feels like a pinch in my vagina. It was hurting so bad, so I didn't take long in the grocery store. After the grocery store, I went home. I got home around 4 p.m., and we left shortly after I got home. Me, Eric, and Imari, we went to Kyoto's, which is a Japanese restaurant. So we're sitting around the hibachi grill and I'm so uncomfortable in this chair. There's just so much pressure on my butthole. And it lasted throughout the rest of the day until I got home after we left the restaurant. And wait, once I left the restaurant, like immediately as I'm like walking to the car, my stomach, Maybe the food started to shift. I don't know. But my stomach started to bubble. It hurt it so bad. And I have a strong stomach. I can't eat anything really. And I don't, my stomach doesn't usually bother me. But my stomach started bubbling. So I'm just like, I lean the chair back. I'm relaxing. And then that pain ended up just going away. We ended up going to Bed Bath & Beyond. We walked around for a little bit, which helped my food digest in my stomach. And then... After we left Bed Bath & Beyond, we went to Eric's mom's house. And once I got there, I sat down on the couch for a minute, but I was just so uncomfortable. I left upstairs to go lay in Eric's grandma's bed. I talked with her for a couple hours, just laying down on the bed and I just could not get comfortable. So we ended up going home around 11 o'clock. We're sitting upstairs in the room. And by this point, I'm in my house robe with nothing on underneath it. I'm standing up and I'm talking to Eric. He's sitting down and there's this trickle of liquid that comes out and it's a milky colored liquid. I lift my leg up on the bed and I'm like, am I tripping or is this milky? Is it clear? He's like, no, that's milky. So I go to the bathroom and I just start to pee and I'm like, well, let me get in the shower, clean myself off. And he's like, well, if you get in the shower, you're not going to know if it continues. I'm like, you're right. So then I ended up putting some panties on so I could see if the leak continued. And it did. And it's like a milky color with these white specks in it. And I Googled it. Google says that when your mucus plug comes out, it's more of a mucusy, gooey substance. But your amniotic fluid, which is your water, is more of a, it's a liquid. So don't get those confused, basically. I have my own heart Doppler here. I monitored the baby's heart rate and it was at 138, which was his heart rate earlier at the doctor's appointment. So his heart rate is good and I'm laying down now. I took a shower. I did put some more panties on just so I could see if some more liquid came out. But in any case, I'm not really in pain and there has been more liquid coming out. I'm almost certain that it's my water break in, but I just don't want to go to the hospital yet because last time they just kept sending me home like two or three times and I don't want to go through that again. I'd rather be uncomfortable at home until it's like real serious. I don't want to be there any longer than I need to be. I'd rather be home comfortable in my own bed with my boppy pillow. You know what I'm saying? But that's it for now it's 4 20 in the morning we just got to the hospital we got a long walk to the birthing center so he is pushing me in a wheelchair we took imari to his grandma's house i still don't have any contractions i'm not in any pain but my water keeps on leaking i had called my ob on call doctor and she advised me to go ahead and come to the hospital because once my water breaks, I'm at risk for infecting the baby if I don't come in. So this is where we're at now, 4.20 in the morning. 
Oh my gosh, guys, this is it. I'm all checked in, I'm about to go pee and then go to my room. It's 5.50 in the morning and after Eric wheeled me to the triage room, they tested me and they made sure that my water broke and they did an ultrasound to make sure that his head was down. My water did break, his head was down, so they ended up admitting me to the room and I'm still not in any pain. They're gonna give me, um, what is it called, babe? So they're gonna give me some Pitocin, oxytocin. What it does is starts to make me contract and she's starting at level one and it can go all the way up to level 20. So level one is just basically to get things going, I guess. I'm not in any pain and I'm not contracting, but my water has definitely broke and I'm at four centimeters dilated. I can't drink any water. They gave me some ice chips. All I can do is eat the ice chips and suckers, that's it. He'll be here today, July 31st, 2021. It's 5.20 p.m. And my baby Armello is here. Yes, that's his name, Armello. And I'm just so blessed and relieved that he's healthy and ready to be a part of this world on his own. I was really worried because I gave birth at 36 weeks. I'm 36 weeks today. That's four weeks early. But he was born six pounds, eight ounces, so almost seven pounds. The nurse had came in when I was recording that last video. And after she left, I ended up passing out. It's now going on 7.30 p.m.-ish. Going back to this morning, the nurse ended up starting the oxytocin in my IV around 6.15ish. And I laid in bed until nine-ish. And around nine, my levels of oxytocin were kicked up to three. So I started to feel contractions. And when I started to feel contractions, I got up out of the bed. I stood next to the bed and I just kind of bounced on my heels and moved around a little bit. My contractions started to get really severe around noon. And by then, the levels of the oxytocin were kicked up to like seven. The highest that it went to was eight. And by 1 p.m., I was given birth. I did another all natural vaginal delivery. I didn't use any pain medication at all, not even Tylenol or Midol, nothing, nothing at all. I didn't use anything. So I'm really proud of that because. Near the end of my labor and delivery, I was just, oh my gosh, I was so close to just saying F it and getting at least like the nitro gas. I think that's what it's called, the nitro gas or the this one medication that goes through the IV that sedates you. But then I'm just, I'm thinking about my baby and I'm just like, nah, especially because it's so close. I'm already at the finish line and two, I didn't want that to be in his system. I didn't want him to come out all drowsy. I'm cramping really bad. It only comes like once an hour, but when it comes, it's like, oh my gosh, it feels like another contraction. It's Monday, August 2nd, like 2.40 in the morning. We've been home since yesterday, Sunday, August 1st. We spent a whole 24 hours in the hospital after I gave birth making sure that Ermelo was healthy and he passed all of his tests. So we were able to come home after the 24 hours. Imari met Ermelo and it was just a priceless moment. I can't even explain it. He loves his little brother. He's so helpful already. I'm a mama too now, y'all. I don't know when's the next time y'all gonna see me. Until next time.